In this video, we're going to talk about the different types of data visualization that you can use. Now, this is not by any means a comprehensive list, but these are some of the more basic um, data visualization graphs and tables that are used. Now, regardless of the type of data visualization display that you use, um, all pictorial or graphical displays of data should have a title. And guys, the title, you want to make it, give it as much detail as possible. Think about who, where, what, when. Again, someone should be able to look at the graph with no prior knowledge and know exactly what information is being displayed. So you want your title to be display, uh, detailed as much as possible. You want to make sure that you label each axis, whether it's the both the horizontal axis and the vertical axis. A lot of times we'll use the variable name and the units if that's appropriate. Um, and then finally, if you're comparing more than one data set and they're displayed together, you may need to provide a key or a legend so that the person who is reviewing the display will know um, which one is represented by which color or um, whether it's a dotted line or um, a solid line. So we're going to focus on qualitative data first. Remember, qualitative data is words and phrases primarily. It can be numeric in the sense that it's labeled, a label. So one of the more common types of graphs that is used with qualitative data is a bar graph. And if you'll notice this graph here on the left, again, notice it has a title. It says County of Residence for GHC Students in Spring 2016. So I know immediately what it's telling me about. My horizontal axis represents the counties. We had Bartow, Cherokee, Cobb, Gordon, and Paulding. And then the vertical scale represents the number of students. The height or the length of your bars, which mine are displayed in green here, represent the frequency of the category. And one of the things that this particular graph does as well is notice at the top of the bar, it puts the number 21. So I know there were 21 students in spring 2016 that lived in Bartow County. There were seven students surveyed that lived in Cherokee. So that gives you, it helps you out because you don't have to kind of guesstimate where it is. Notice there are gaps between the bars because each one of these counties or each one of these categories are individual. They're kind of like a standalone. So, I mean, you don't really have someone that lives in Bartow Cobb, okay? They either live in Bartow or they live in Cobb, they don't live in both. So the gaps help to indicate that these are separate individual categories. Most statistical software packages, whether that's Minitab, Microsoft Excel, whether you Google um, and find um, a free website that will do it, but most uh, statistical software packages will create a bar graph for you. Some other type bar graphs, especially if you need to maybe compare um, different data sets or, you know, um, break it down further if you want to break it down by gender or perhaps you have several different products, you can use either a side-by-side -side bar graph or you can use a stacked one. And again, we typically will use um, different colored bars for the different groups. Um, if you don't have access to color, sometimes they'll do varying shades of gray or use different kinds of thatching. Maybe one of them is just plain white, one of them has little dots, one of them has lines, but some way you have to distinguish it. And this is a case where you may want to include the key or the legend. Because if you look at the graph here at the bottom on the left, um, it tells us that the black bar represents the total the blue is the male and red is the female um, people are 
and you're looking at the percent of literacy by continent and by gender. Um, and then you also have stacked. Stacked to me is a little bit harder to read, um, but you're, you have the different colors to represent, in this case, different products and the sales strategy that you used. Okay, so again, that's more app. These are more applicable if you're going to compare more than one data set. A second type graph or a third type of bar graph is called a Pareto chart. Um, one of the benefits of a Pareto chart is that rather than have the bars in typically alphabetical order, they're in order um, of frequency. You have the highest frequency first and then it goes down from there and you can run a line to show the cumulative percentages or the cumulative frequency as you go. Um, and so like for example I know that lack of training um, is 55 percent in terms of people who had unsatisfactory customer service. I then know again and I may have to estimate but then I have inadequate pay, um, flawed communication, and so forth. So a Pareto chart is still a bar graph, but you do it in order of frequency from high down to low. So it helps you to immediately see, oh, here's where our biggest problem is. Also with qualitative data, the other top chart that you'll see used a lot is a pie chart. With a pie chart, each slice of the pie represents the relative frequency or the percentage of each category. And it allows you to see how each category compares to the whole. Um, pie charts you'll see used a lot when you're maybe displaying budgets and thinking about how much you're going to spend um, in the different categories for materials, for labor, for advertising and so forth. So it allows you to see how each category compares to the other or how the whole 100% budget, if you will, is going to break down. So the two primary uh, graphs or charts for qualitative data are a bar chart and a pie chart. And again, most statistical software packages, Minitab, Microsoft Excel, um, will create a pie chart for you. So let's switch gears to quantitative data. Quantitative data, um, one of the most useful or the one that's used most often is called, excuse me, a histogram. In a histogram, is similar to a bar graph but notice it doesn't have gaps between the bars okay it displays the data from the frequency distribution from the table once you've organized your data into a table the horizontal scale okay is labeled either using class boundaries or using class midpoints it depends on what technology you're using. It may also depend upon the researcher. In this particular example, the graph at the top for quality defects has the class midpoint and the graph at the bottom is using your class boundaries. Regardless, your vertical scale is the frequency. Uh, so how much each tells and then we could talk about and we probably will much later talk about the shape of the graph does the shape do you have a lot of values on the low end or a lot of values on the high end or do they seem to be kind of close together or grouped together in the center and I already pointed out that in terms of the graph that the bars are what we call contiguous there's no gaps between them for the histogram which is used with quantitative data. You can also use um, a line graph with quantitative data. The benefit of a line graph is it helps you to see a trend or possibly a pattern um, within the data. Um, the horizontal axis again would correspond to your data values. The vertical is your frequency. Each dot 
represents a particular data value. So like in October of 2019, we had 35,000 produce sales. In November, we had, say, roughly 60. Okay, so you can begin to see, oh, and you can see very quickly, it went up from October to November. Then there was a drop. Um, and so you can begin to see um, patterns within that. The dots represent each data value or data point, and then they're connected, sort of like playing dot to dot. You can also have multiple lines on the same graph. Again, you just need to provide the key or the legend. In this one, the blue line represents desktops, the orange is laptops, and the gray is tablets. And so it allows you to make a comparison between those three different type products from month to month and lets you see whether the trend was up or down. Um, or in relationship to one another. That one you see a lot in relationship probably to stocks um, or sales from month to month or year to year. A third quantitative graph is a box plot. A box plot um, usually displays the five number summary and the outliers of a data set. Um, and it always has 25% of the data values between the minimum and a quartile. It actually displays um, the quartiles. And remember, quartiles divide your data into four um, equal areas or equal parts where each part contains 25% of the data. Between quartile one and the median, there's 25% between the median and quartile three, there's 25%. And then finally, between quartile three and the maximum. And we can actually draw a picture of this. You can do it manually, but again, most statistical softwares are going to create a box plot for you. Some of them will do it vertically. Some of them will do it horizontally. So for example, with this vertical display, you have the minimum, and then you have a bar that is drawn up to the first quartile. You have the median is indicated, the third quartile is indicated, and then you have your maximum. Typically, if there's an outlier, it'll be a little open circle. It possibly sometimes is a little asterisk or a star. The inner quartile range shows the middle 50%. We can also look at this display of the box plot and think about whether the graph is skewed left, skewed right, or symmetric, or what is the shape of the distribution. And again, most of your statistical software packages will create a box plot. I'm not sure that Excel does a box plot. Um, or again, you can Google um, various um, websites, I'm sure, and find one that will make you a box plot for free as well. Um, you will be learning how to do a histogram and a box plot um, in Minitab in this particular course.